this week in indoor football. Oh boy. Oh man. I, I, I'm i speechless on this night. Speechless. Why don't we talk some other stuff first before we get to the actual games. Uh, first things first, the Tulsa Oilers, they officially announced that IFL team named the team contest. They're going to play in the box center in March of 2023. You know, same place uh, old Tulsa Talons play. And pretty much IFL confirmed that, you know, basically through this press conference, going to have a 16-game schedule again next year. So keep that in mind. Um, there was a mention of you know eight home games in the Tulsa press release. And the national championship game, the halftime show is just going to consist of a bunch of U football games. Um, so Mississippi Raiders moment in that. Um, the NAL rulebook, it's finally available. You can finally look at it. Uh, it's probably going to change next year, I guarantee you. But, hey, it's it's there. It's We've been asking for it all season. We got it. A uh, couple other things. Uh, the Indianapolis Enforces, their Facebook got hacked. Uh, if you do receive anything, be sure to be sure to contact them. Oh boy, they own. They used to own the Indianapolis Enforcers because uh, that that's not that's not the Enforcers. That's a scam bot probably running the Facebook and the AIFA. One thing I did find in the past, you know, a uh, few days, is yeah. Despite a disaster of a first season, they're looking to expand nationally. I don't think they should do that. I think they should just fold. But I mean, you know. You know they're they're still they're still trying to you know, you know use the uh, the black and minor and, and, and urbanly and, and celebrity owned excuse as to why they were an absolute failure their first year. I, I don't get it. I've, I've set my piece on the AIFA all season long, and it, it's coming to a head. So two weeks from now. First things first, let's talk the IFL National Championship. I wish we still called the United Bowl, but it's called the Day of National Championship. And oh boy, a lot of Rattler fans are going to be real salty about this. They're salty still. They're probably, they're, they're probably, you know, they are probably eating their words right now. Remember, I picked the Arizona Rattlers to win the IFL championship this year. Just like I picked, um, you know, another team. We'll talk about that team in a moment when we talk about the NAL stuff. Arizona, they lost to the Northern Arizona Wranglers. They had the lead the entire game the Rattlers did, you know. The entire game until, you know, a crazy few sequences. Um, the big ones being Arizona loses their kicker. And there was also a pass... That was incomplete. Wasn't dropped. You know, it wasn't dropped, but it went through the hands of the receiver. Went to the ground. It took like 10 minutes to get it all figured out. Keep in mind, I was watching this and SummerSlam at the same time. So, you know, wild night, um, you know, towards the end of the night. And what did Arizona? They didn't have to lead the entire game. They were struggling at first. They were down 14 multiple times, you know. It was wild. And yet, the Wranglers turned it around just like they turned their season around into having one of the best years imaginable. And they are going to the IFL National Championship game on August 13th to face E.J. Hilliard and the Quad City Steeplers. Who, and Hilliard, by the way, stepped up with crazy, crazy plays himself. We're talking, this man was almost sacked in the backfield on multiple occasions. You know, in fact, the one occasion I am talking about in which he escapes the pass rush of the fighters. Somehow, he somehow escapes, dips off into the end zone, boom, there you go, Quad City, you know, Get you know they stop a Frisco Hail Mary at the end too, and a wild wild 
weekend of the IFL ends with that. A championship that, you know, uh, I bet some certain, you know, constituents of the IFL, you know, guys at the top don't want, you know, a Quad City Northern Arizona championship. They, they, Todd Tryon probably like, what? What do you mean? We, I mean, I'll support this, but what do you mean? I, I'm, not, I'm not here for that. But I'm here for it. We're all here for it. I know Todd, I know Todd's probably here for it, too. I'm just playing. But this is not what anybody expected at all to be the IFL championship game this year. Nobody expected this. Nobody expected Quad City to get the get far the way they did. They beat the defending champs. They beat the team that dominated all season long in Frisco. You know, it's wild. And then you have Northern Arizona. They they beat Tucson. They took care of business against Tucson, and then they beat the Arizona Rattlers in a game that they were not expected to win. A lot of people did not expect them to win this game. And if you are betting on the IFL, shame on you for doing that. <laughs> shame on you. You should not be pouring your money into indoor football. Don't do that. I'm, I'm being serious. Man. There we go. That's one championship down. What about the NAL? Albany. They get the host. They get to stay home and host the championship. Yeah, people are going to complain about the attendance and whatever. It's fine. They had to fight again against Jacksonville. They had to fight against San Antonio last week. They had to fight against Jacksonville this week. And despite the fact that Jacksonville messed up at the end, you know, Albany survived. They survived and they got what they got. A championship game home appearance to defend their crown and hopefully win another championship next in a couple weeks. And then you have the Carolina Cobras who have had a tumultuous, you know, up and down season, you know, where they looked down at the start of the year and I was kind of, you know, I was kind of, you know, flipping, flopping on them. You know, where I was like, I think this I think this Cobras team could do it. But they turned it around, you know, the past couple weeks, they've turned it around to where they are putting themselves in a good position. They overwhelmed Columbus. We're talking we're talking the Lions kept this game pretty close, but ultimately, you know, fourth quarter came around, the Cobras put them away. And so the top two teams in the NAL are gonna meet up August thirteenth. I presume it'll be, you know, six o'clock, so it'll be before It'll be an hour or so before the IFL championship game. Really, really and truly, we should have these games on separate days, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, hey, uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna cry about it or anything. But yeah, there are two games left in the arena indoor football season, and I cannot wait to come back and talk. August 13th. I am depend. It depends on you know if there's anything next week. If I'll do a this week in the North football. If not, I'll substitute that episode with something else, um, probably lacrosse related, um, so we can get that out the way. Because I do need to do another one, you know, real quick. So come back in two weeks, and we'll discuss it all. The IFL championship game, the NAL championship game. Who will be the final two champions in this 2022 season? Because I'm over three on predictions. Remember, I picked Billings to win the CIF, and they did not. I picked Columbus to win the NAL, and they did not. And I picked Arizona to win the IFL, and they did not. Um, um, I'm over three on that. Um... Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, you know, try again next year. This is why I don't bet money. <laughs> I can't bet it money anyway because I'm in Texas, but, uh, yeah. What, 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 what a season, man. This is wild. In any case, good night. I'll see you guys Monday. Take care.